Somebody reached out to me wanting to tell his story of deconversion from apostasy of Islam. Uh, and he was in Kenya, and a Somalian immigrant who's now a refugee in Kenya, long story. And I tried to get him on a podcast a couple of times, but he had to use public Wi-Fi, which was a very poor signal, and the sound was awful. And one of the reasons, and not just because it was a, you know, a cafe where he was doing the signal, but also because he couldn't speak loud enough for me to hear him without other people in the cafe hearing him because apparently under any circumstances if you are an open atheist in many African countries then you're in serious trouble. And on one of the two attempts where we tried to do this he said that he thought that that people could understand what he was saying and that he had to flee the cafe. So we took another angle on it. Uh, there were there were audio issues and a number of other things so he wrote me an email uh, and he tried to read with some difficulty what he was sending to me on an audio file and so I'm going to share that with you now. Hello, I'm Hassan, a Somali ex-Muslim artist living in Kenya. I started doubting Islam back in 2012 and questioned the existence of a merciful God or Allah and not come out publicly until 2017. Five years later, the first people to find out about my name was my family. My mom always knew that I did not pray and um, fast, but she did not uh, know I was no longer a believer. Her reaction, that of my sister, was to ask me to return to God. My cousin found out later and he told people, especially my relatives, about it. People who have never cared about me recently started to get on my case. I would be going about my life and someone would provoke me or insult me or harass me. It all wasn't in 2018 when I was. Um, attacked several times the first time I caught a beta that was only the beginning I then got attacked one night while I was returning from uh, from the market and I had my arm fractured my right, right arm by being hit with um, a metal iron rod I used to report the incidents to the police believing that they would help me. Around the end of 2018, I got assaulted, got a head injury which until now affects my vision. Coming back to the situation in Somalia, Somalia is a slow house for liberal people and modern Muslims live alone, mm, ex-Muslims or atheists. Apostasy is punishable by death and it is in the constitution. Freedom of religion is not even discussed. Leave alone being recognized. Al Shawab, which enforces a, a strict form of Islamic Sharia, views atheism as a greater sin than murdering all the people on earth. It constantly, summarily executes. People it claims are apostates and considers the Somali people and considers most of the Somali people as um, apostates. Carries out attacks against civilians, claiming they are not Muslims. Only people living under its control are badgered daily with the slightest accusation of being a kafir or sometimes. Mm, claim they are mm, LGBTQ. I know several Somali who were killed for being non Muslims. Staying in government control areas is worse as you face persecution from the public and society and in the law that people who live Islam should be put to death. Most of this, this I know of did not even dare talk about their disbelief because 
of a fear of uh, because of fear of retribution mm -hmm. last year um, September I was contacted by a Somali artist from Somaliland he told me that people were looking for him um, uh, and they, they wanted to ban him alive for renouncing Islam of course the only help I could give him was to go to Yansar considering my situation at the time uh, uh, and not even have um, peace or somewhere to sleep at night I did not know whether he made out or alive or I don't, I, don't, I don't hear from him nowadays I try but I don't know what's going on now Fleeing to Kenya is, um, is not uh, better as a Somali people who live here communicate with those in Somalia and just as and are just as extreme if not worse personally I had people come in during the time I was in Nairobi and need to avoid them but at night um, I could not they will come to my house harass threaten to ban me alive and tell me that I will be lynched I had to move like five times since I came here. The station just gets worse as my options of mm, moving to new neighbors decrease. Yes, uh, just um, as was and superstitious. One of the tactics Somali people use to incite people against you is to claim that um, you are a witch or a satan worshiper Kenyans are naturally aggressive and have and hate witches and anything weird to the core threatening you that they will burn you alive I have had actually to move several to move uh, severally because of Kenyans who are incited against me being the refugee camps is was as there is uh, practically no um, no law enforcement who will help um, ex Muslims out. I know of a Christian Somali lady who was uh, raped and, and um, um, was threatened with death if she reported the the gang rap to the police she is called um, um, Muna the last time I heard about her she was living she was still living in the dark um, um, and UN chair is not that much helpful it considers these cases as sensitive and and actually I think because of um, it is fear of um, of being um, blamed by the Somali people it does not act on the reports and the complaints the only other artists I know of of Somali ethnicity are the people I meet online who um, tell me of their experiences um, one of them being uh, a journalist called uh, Halima Salat um, she actually used to be a reporter for one of the major news organizations in Kenya called um, uh, NTN, uh, KTN I mean. Now she lives in the uh, she lives in Denmark. She's an activist as well. Uh, 
being on social media is a kind of dangerous for somebody this is as they are frequently outed and have their details published with calls for their deaths i have personally experienced this when my details were posted in, in one of the somali in one of the popular somali facebook groups i had to change my phone number and location because of the death threats i was receiving complaining to the police doesn't help as they have biased against others the threat posed by islamic extremism is very real and very grave if the west does not do something about it i think by 2040 they will have overtaken uh, us and maybe by then we will be living as slaves the way they envision i actually saw them posting that um, they are going to enslave people they talk over Europe or USA although that is lovable because they are of ambitious but I think if something is not done about it then I think world peace is in great danger thanks wish you the best